what's up guys um, so after a uh, sort of long hiatus I'm back um, and I'm finally getting around to my long awaited long overdue squat tutorials um, this first one is gonna be a high bar squat tutorial um, and this is just gonna be a regular high bar squat not an Olympic squat um, because I don't know how to Olympic squat uh, and in this case I'm using Marcus as an example just because uh, his body proportions are more suited to high bar squatting um, at least more so than mine um, that being said, most of you guys should be able to high bar squat com should be able to high bar squat comfortably um, with correct form. So let's get into it. As soon as you get under the bar, the first thing you're gonna want to do is retract your shoulders back and up. Um, you want your upper back to be fully contracted as much as it can be, um, and pulling shoulders back and up will help you to create a sort of a shelf um, on top of your traps, uh, which is where your bar will go uh, for a high bar squat. Um, if you look at Marcus's bar position, his bar is actually pretty low in his traps for a high bar squat, but um, that's perfectly fine. Um, you can go sort of anywhere between there and like all, all the way up on top of your traps, sort of by your neck. Um, the only thing that I would be wary of is you don't want your bar so high on top of your traps that it's uh, putting pressure on your spine. But once once you get your bar positioned um, there, uh, another important thing to remember is to keep your elbows down underneath the bar and your hands in tight. Um, sort of close to your shoulders to um, maintain that back tightness, the upper back tightness, and keep your back stable throughout the entire lift. Um, you also don't ever want to relax your upper back in the entire lift. Obviously, people always stress your lower back. Um, you have to keep your lower back flat and keep your lower back tight. Um, but the same thing applies to your upper back as well. So the rack was a little bit too high for Marcus, but ideally what you would do is you would stand up with the bar, um, and then once the bar stabilizes, then you walk it back. Um, and set your feet in place. Um, your feet should be about shoulder width uh, apart. Um, a good starting point would be putting your heels directly below your shoulders and then going from there. Um, you could obviously make it a little bit wider, a little bit more narrow depending on where you're comfortable. And your toes will be pointed a little bit out to allow your knees to track outward. Um, your spine will be upright and you'll notice um, when Marcus is about to initiate his squat he'll take a, a breath in and that's called a Valsalva maneuver. Um, if you don't know what that is, I'll make a video about that sometime soon, um, as long as I remember. Uh, but let's get into the descent. As you descend into the squat, your knees should drive outward, your chest should stay up, and you should notice that uh, Marcus keeps his head pretty much straight forward, um, not looking completely up. Uh, if you crank your neck up, then you will sacrifice your neutral cervical spine, which will also throw off your thoracic curve, which will make it harder to maintain a, a flat back. So, in the bottom position of the squat, um, your knees will be um, outside of your heels or, or possibly, depending on the width of your stance, they could be directly over um, when looking at your squat straight on. Um, other than that, your chest will be up and your head will be um, sort of straight ahead so that you can maintain a neutral spine. Uh, again, your elbows will stay down below the bar, uh, your back will be tight. And one of the most important things to point out is depth. Um, you can see here, well, it might be hard to see from this angle, but proper depth is your hip crease being below the top surface of your knee. And when we look at another angle, it'll be easier to see that, but um, let's move on to the ascent. On the way up, you should be driving through your heels and keep driving your knees outward just like you did on the way down. Um, and one more important thing to keep note of is that your hips should never rise faster than your shoulders. Um, and what I mean by that is that a lot of time you see people um, out of the hole, their hips will shoot up and it'll increase the angle of their spine. It'll look like they're leaning forward a lot more, which makes the lift a lot harder on your lower back. Um, but like I said, always hit depth, uh, drive your knees out, and keep yourself upright. On the side, once his position is set, or once your position is set, um, you'll see Marcus, again, he breathes in for that Valsalva maneuver. Um, and then here we can take a look at that position before you descend. Um, the bar will be over your your heels or the middle of your foot um, and generally your bar pass should remain over that same line um, obviously it might be further back at the top of your rep um, or when you're locked out and then it'll shift forward a little bit as you go down but other than that your bar path should remain pretty straight now if we pause at the bottom you will notice that um, Marcus's knees are forward of his toes um, which a lot of people say is not a good thing um, but you have to keep in mind that it really doesn't matter where your knees are in relation to your toes as long as your weight isn't shifting forward. Um, and realistically, most people 
uh, with normal body proportions, if you hit full depth, your knees will shift over your toes in a high bar squat. The most important thing is that you keep your back or your spine relatively upright like you see here. Um, and the best way to do that is to open up your hips, drive your knees out to allow yourself. Um, you kind of want to feel like your body is dropping down in between your legs, if that makes any sense. Um, and you'll also notice, again, that that bar is still over the middle of, his, uh, of Marcus's foot. Um, and that is about as good as it gets. Um, and so in the ascent, your knees will drive out and your spine will remain upright. And as you come to the top, your hips will come through forward. Um, and now full speed, again, pausing at the bottom just for demonstration purposes. Um, but also, you should take note of that depth. Um, I'll pause again here uh, because I forgot to mention that um, from the side, it's very easy to see. Um, full depth is... Um, oh, I, at least as defined by USAPL and I think IPF powerlifting, um, full depth would be considered when your hip crease is below the top surface of your knee. And as far as I'm concerned, um, if you're training for hypertrophy or strength, uh, that should be the minimum for your squat. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for some of you. Um, <clears throat> I've got to give a quick shout out to Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ um, because most of the things that I've learned about form, um, whether it be squatting, deadlifting, whatever, um, in the past year or so, I've learned from watching his channel. So if you haven't seen his channel, go check it out um, and subscribe as soon as possible. Um, and he actually has a couple of squat tutorials or squat videos that are much better than anything that I'll be posting. Um, so make sure you watch those as well. I'll put a link in the description and in an annotation. Um, but that's about it for this video. Um, stay tuned for my low bar squat tutorial as well as um, I'll be making videos on the Valsalva maneuver and on um, the difference between between high bar and low bar squats. Um, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.